Hey guys, welcome back to another video here. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to rig up a bobber setup. And this is a little different than some people do it. Uh, this is more of a bobber dogging style. Um, so if you don't know how to bobber dog, this is kind of um, a way you can do that. And this is how I rig up my, when I'm fishing, beads and uh, a lot of times eggs, beads, eggs, yarn, uh, different bait presentations. This is how I'm going to be doing it. So to start off um, with your rod and reel setup, um, this is actually a bait casting rod. You can use a spinning rod, but uh, any any rod will work um, between you want something that's probably about eight foot to ten and a half foot. You can go even longer um, or shorter if you wanted, but for me, my personal preference would be um, like an eight and a half to ten and a half footer. Um, I think this one here is like a nine footer. So um, that's the rod. You can use bait caster or spinning. Um, uh, for the reel, um, that's on here. I have a bait caster. Obviously, with a spinning rod, you'd have a spinning reel. Um, anything that you know has a decent quality, has a good drag on it, and can hold a good amount of line uh, for the steelhead, because you don't want to hook a steelhead and have it, you know, run on, take a bunch of line and spool you. So just something that will hold a lot of bra line. And for the line, I'm using braid. Um, this is happens to be 20 pound braid. Um, you can use 30, 40, you can even go up to 50 or 60 if you wanted, but um, 20 or 30 pound is what I like to stick with. And uh, with that braid, you can fit a lot of braids. It's got small diameters, so you can fit a lot on your reels. So usually when I'm fishing with uh, the braid, um, you don't have to you know, worry about um, not having enough line on there, because if you go to the store and buy a big spool of braid and you know, fill up a reel, you're pretty much good to go. So, let's get into the rigging part. So on that, off that rod, I've got my braid coming off. And uh, what I'm gonna do to get this started, I'm gonna take a bobber stop. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. But I'm taking a bobber stop and I'm putting, I'm actually gonna put two bobber stops on just to hold my bobber so it's not sliding around too much. And there's different brands and different styles of bobber stops. I like to use these ones. Uh, these little egg stops, um, they go on your line, hopefully you can see that, like so. And what that does, I actually put two of them on, uh, like I said, but it basically just stops your bobber from sliding up, we'll get to that um, in a little bit. But to make different brands, different types of them, um, this is just the type I use because I have them, I use this for bass fishing, so. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little uh, bead, it's just a little teeny uh, bead for you know rigging up. It's not one that you'd fish like necessarily fish with but um, Just a little bead and all that's gonna do is stop your bobber from going over those bobber stops Because those bobber stops are small enough to where that bobber will slide over it. You don't want that to happen So slide on the bead and then for the bobber um, It really there's tons of different brands out there. You want to make sure it's a slip bobber So it's got the hole going through it and uh there's different brands, All this is just like a cheap one, cheap foam bobber, which works fine. Um, bunch of different brands um, out there, so you can just, you know, pick up a few, try try a couple out and see what you like. These ones I get because they're just cheap and they they work. I mean, really, it doesn't really matter as long as your bobber floats and, uh, you know, doesn't tear up your line or anything, then it's good to go. So then my bobber's on like that. Then, if you want, you can slide another bead on. I don't have another bead, so I'm going to tie on a little uh, snap. This is a dual lock snap. Uh, hopefully you can see that, but you could use a swivel if you wanted. Uh, for me, I like using these snaps because it's just easier to change. And you guys probably can't see this, but I'm going to tie a palmer knot uh, with braided line. You know, always use a palmer knot. Alright guys, so there you go. I got that little snap tied on. A uh, little dual lock with a palmer knot. Always use a palmer knot with braid. And so now, let me slide everything down. Now, uh, that's that's what it looks like. And some of you, if you fished a bobber before, might be like, wait a second, where's your weight at? Because this happens to be a 3 8 ounce bobber. And uh, if you don't have that 3 8 ounce weight and you throw that on the water, it's going to sit sideways. And how you want is this bobber to sit more vertical. Um, but with this technique, like I said, it's kind of like bobber dogging. 
I rig it just like that. There's no weight on there. And then I'm gonna go over here, and that's basically it for what for the bobber. Um, then, good thing this is barbless. I don't know if you saw that, but I just stuck that sucker pretty good in my finger. Good thing it's <laughs> already barbless. But um, then I got a leader here for my beads. I'm gonna show you how to do a bead really quick. I like to use a size four hook. Um, you can use whatever you want, really, um, as long as it doesn't affect. You just gotta watch, make sure it doesn't affect. The action of the bead and uh, make sure that you know it doesn't sink your bead too bad and so you don't get hung up but a uh, size four this is probably three and a half four feet a 15 pound um, fluorocarbon and uh, line people can you know argue all different things about line but for me with the fluorocarbon line that they have these days it's I mean it's basically invisible underwater I don't think it really affects the fish Maybe if you're in super pressured water or something, um, or, you know, super clear water. But, to me, it doesn't really affect the fish as much. And, uh, so there's my hook. And like I said, you can run with this technique. You don't have to put a bead on there. I'm going to show you how to do a bead. You don't have to put a bead on there. You could run eggs. You could run a corky and eggs, corky and yarn. You could run a yarn ball. Um, but, then with this, what I'm going to do next is slide a bead on to a little, uh, steely bead. Actually, this is a, this bead here, I think, is a Brad, a Brad bead. So I slid it on, and then I'm going to move that uh, a couple inches above the hook, about two inches or so. I used to be way more uh, particular on how I did this. Just dropped the bead, but I used to be like, oh, it has to be two fingers, or it has to be three fingers, or whatever. Now I'm just like, oh, I'll just pull it up a couple inches, take a toothpick. Uh, they make different pegs out there, but the easiest one for me is just toothpick. Stab it in there. Push it down. You don't want to push too much because you don't want to fray up your line too, ma too bad. But just push it in there nice and snug. And then just break it. And now that bead is pegged just like that. And then it's going to go down the current, wash and down. So now, you come to the other end of this. And I'm going to tie... A loop in it. You can adjust your leader to however long you want it. I like to stick between three and maybe five feet. You're going to take that and make a loop. I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to tie a little loop in my line. You could tie a swivel on there if you wanted. Or if you have a swivel, go back to the bobber. If you had a, if you had tied a swivel onto your bobber instead of a snap, you could just tie that directly uh, to the swivel. But then, so I've got a little loop right there, and then I've got a bunch of tag in. You see how much tag in I left on this loop? And I'm gonna cut this uh, down, but I'm gonna leave quite a bit off. So take my knife and cut it down. But I'll show you, hopefully you can see. There's the loop, and I leave quite a bit of tag end on there. And the reason for that is that's where your weight is gonna go. You have to have some kind of weight in this rig. If you threw this out like this with no weight on there, um, you're gonna, it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna be fishing. So take the snap on my bobber, clip it on that loop, just like that. And if you were to throw that out there with no weight, it's not, the bobber's gonna float up here, the bead's gonna be probably only six inches under the surface, not fishing. So, what you need to do with that big tag in that we left on there, is grab a piece of uh, pencil lead, and this is hollow core pencil lead. And that's a pretty good size right there. And with this, it's not as much like if you were fishing a bobber, rigging up like a normal slip bobber and you had a little inline weight on here, you want this bobber to be perfectly up and down. But with this way, uh, you're going to be using this pencil lead to, to kind of tick along the bottom. And so your bobber is not going to always be straight up and down anyway. So it really doesn't matter how much weight. Um, you can also adjust it when you're out on the river. But you just want enough weight to get down in the water column. Get down in, on the bottom. Um, and make sure that that weight is down there ticking along the bottom. So what you do, that's hollow, so it's got a hole in the middle of it. And you slide it over your tag end. Then grab some pliers. And this lead, it's really soft. You can break this into any size you want. But then you just pinch it on there. And you can just pinch one end. I like to pinch both ends. 
just so it's secure, just so I don't cast it off, because especially with a bait caster, if you go to cast and your lead flings off, you're gonna get a backlash, so. Um, but there you go. Just like that. And then you got your bead down here. So what that's gonna do, is now you take your bobber stops, and you adjust them up until, when you're fishing, you adjust them up until your pencil lead is just barely ticking along the bottom. And you'll see this, you'll see the bobber. The bobber will be like this, and it will kind of be, tick, you can kind of see it bumping and hopping along the bottom. And what that is, your pencil lead bumping the bottom. And you don't want it too much, you don't want your bobber to be leaned over and it to be like dragging on bottom. And you can feel it. Um, but you know you can feel through usually especially with braid if you have the braid like this it's sensitive and you can feel that weight down there a lot of times and uh if you pull your line tight you can feel it anyway and you just want this weight to just barely be every once in a while like it, it will be about like this if this is the bottom if you want it to be right around in here oh there's a big rock it ticks that rock you want it to be right in this area here you don't want it to be down here Dragging, hopefully you can see, dragging on the bottom because it will get hung up. You want it just to be every once in a while, kind of, you know, bouncing around on the bottom every once in a while. And then your bead, or like I said, eggs, your yarn, whatever, is going to be down there behind it, just just working away. It's going to just be getting thrown around on the current, um, acting just like an egg or whatever, um, getting thrown around on the current and the fish. The steelhead will sit right up off the bottom, so it's a good technique to keep your bait down close to the bottom. And they see that little bead or egg, you know, wishing around, and they grab it. So, hopefully this video helped you out. Hopefully now you know how to rig up a, uh, basically what this is, a bobber dogging setup. I'm, gonna, oops, I'm probably going to call this video um, how to set up a bobber dog. But uh, that's basically what a bobber dog setup is. Basically, just let that weight tick along. And really, it's not very much different than actual drift fishing. You know, back in the day, before people bobber fished, all they did was drift fish. And basically, it's that rig without the bobber. It's just a piece of pencil lead, a bead or a corky, and uh, no bobber. And you just throw it out there and let it tick along the bottom. And you can feel it on your rod. Tick, tick, tick. And so now they just added the bobber, and what it does is it keeps your bait, or uh, keeps the weight, so it's not on the bottom as much, and just so you don't get hung up as much. It's basically what it does. It just keeps you from getting hung up too bad. Because um, back in the day when you used to actually drift fish, which I'm not that old, so not very really back, not, you know what I mean? So it, it was a while ago, before I was born, back in the day when everyone just, no bobbers were really invented, everyone just drift fished. You use this and you just have it tick along the bottom and you but it ticked along the bottom so much because you want it to go tick 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 nice steady hitting the bottom that you get hung up a lot and now with this you can find the bottom and then just adjust it up a little bit so it's just right off the bottom so you're not so you're down there on the close to the bottom but you're not actually dragging the bottom um hopefully you guys understand that uh, understand what i'm saying so uh thanks for watching now you guys know hopefully how to rig up a bobber dogging setup and uh, get out there and fish. Um, get out there, rig up that rig and you know go try to catch a fish. Um, steelhead fishing, where I'm at in the Pacific Northwest in Washington. Uh, steelhead fishing has been tough. Um, I've hooked, we've hooked a couple this year. There's, there's a few fish out there so uh, get out there and uh, try her out and see what you guys can do. So see you in the next video.